everyone, my name is Senti. I'm here to show off a little tool I've made for Stormworks. It's a flight data recorder, but like with many things in this game, it can be repurposed. It's got another trick up its sleeve though. It's able to export its recorded data as CSV using an external server made in Python using Stormworks' HTTP support. It's a pretty capable little thing. It's able to record 32 number channels and 29 booleans, all at once, every tick, and export all of them. Like if you're testing how your aircraft behaves in a failure scenario, I think this should work pretty well. Or if you need to analyze, say, the trajectory of your rocket or something, it should also work well. I've put it up on the workshop for people to download, and it's also on GitHub. You're going to need to visit the GitHub anyway because the Python server is on it, and your computer is not particularly going to appreciate it if you try to export without the Python server installed. I'll have instructions on how to download Python and run the server in the GitHub's README, so read there. I think that's enough yapping though, I've got a couple of demos. I've got a little demo here set up using my pickup truck. You can actually see the stack of microcontrollers I'm using to make this demo work. That 2x3 controller on bottom there closest to the camera, that's got all of the guts of this thing. I'll go ahead and turn it on here. And I've got it set up to record four values for us. Our X coordinate, our Y coordinate, our speed in meters per second, and our gear. With one being park, two being reverse, three being neutral, and four through eight being our drive gears. I've got this instrument panel here with a couple of buttons and an indicator that let me control the CSV exporter. I can start recording, I can export the data when we're done, I can clear the CSV, it's already empty, and this light will turn on when we're done exporting. I've got the CSV and the console pulled up on my other screen so I can see what the Python server is doing. I'll go ahead and start recording there, I'll shift into drive, and I'll just drive around for a little bit, try to record some data. I'm just now realizing it would have been cool to record engine RPS, but whatever. I'm going to try to drive straight east here for a little bit, because we should be able to see that reflect in our y-axis data, because our y-coordinate doesn't change much when we're driving straight east, that's our x-coordinate that changes. I'll go ahead and park here, put it down into park, and I'll stop recording the data. Then I'll press export, and we should be able to see it, or I should be able to see it, populate the CSV file, and the Python server we should put a couple of things in console. Yeah, I see the data is being uh, recorded. And... The light's on. It didn't take all too long now, did it? So I can drag VS Code over here, and we can see this is the data. This is what it looks like. It's just, it's a CSV file. Then what I can do is I can open it up in Excel here, and I can import data from the CSV file. I can go to data.csv, I can import it, and it's gonna give it a second. And we have all of our data, and I'll just load it in here. Excel is kind enough to automatically format it for us, but let's just uh, take a look at, say, our gear over time by plotting it with a line graph. As I mentioned earlier, zero is park, one is reverse, two is neutral, and we have our drive gears. We only ever got up to third gear and drive, so. Whatever. And now I want to visualize what I mentioned with the y-axis flattening out when driving straight east. You can see that for the most part it forms a triangle, but this bit at the end here, where it's relatively flat, that is indeed where we were driving straight east. Our path on the map, we sort of followed a trajectory that looked a bit like this, almost. And we could see how the y-axis would be able to reflect that. We started off going west, and then we went north a little bit south a little bit, and then east. Alternatively, I can use this neat little website called Git Curve, and it lets me visualize the data much better than Excel ever could here. As we can see, we can view all the data at once, and what I really like is that I can zoom in on specific parts here, and it doesn't look all too different. So that was just a couple of data points, and it really didn't take all too long to export. But let's see what it looks like with a much bigger sample set. So I've got my rocket here, and I've connected up the CSV exporter screen and a couple of buttons here. And we're going to be trying to record all of the data from the first stage telemetry here, which is, I think, 14, 12 or 14 number channels and 9 boolean channels that we're going to be recording. Which is a little under half of what it's designed to do. So it should be a pretty good test, and then we'll be able to look at the data afterwards. 
So I'll just spawn it here. And I've also put my second screen up on OBS as well. So you should be able to see an update in real time. The CSV recorded there is from the demo run previously on the pickup truck. And if I spawn it in, it's going to automatically clear the CSV. Optionally, the microcontroller can also output to a screen to give a little bit of insight onto how it's doing. The top line there is the export status. It'll be like not exported or failed or waiting. It just tells you how it's doing. If it's waiting for the Python server or if it's just sent some data or if it failed for whatever reason, it'll tell you there. There's the amount of data points it's recorded. There's an estimated time of how long it'll take to export. It's not 100% accurate, but it is a rough estimate. There's the timer of how long it's actually taking to export. And of course, there's the percentage. How, f how much of the data have we sent to the server? So I'll go ahead and get the rocket to launch here. And we'll set a 10 second timer. And I'll go ahead and press it. It'll launch on its own. I'm gonna go and ask it to start logging. And we can see there, there's a lot. And we have liftoff. Very nice. Got a bunch of cameras here in and pointing at the rocket. But of course, we're focusing on the fact that we've already recorded 24,000 points. And there we go. We have stage separation and the second stage has ignited beautifully. Now the booster is going to come back and it's going to try to land. Quickly demonstrating that it doesn't take all too much on the logic load. There's still a couple of things that I want to do for this project, mainly getting it to export data in real time instead of gathering all of it and then exporting. I think real time would just be a lot easier than what I've got going on here. There's the booster in the air there. Looks like it's just past the cloud layer. Turned on its engine. And a soft landing next to the pad. Beautifully. Let's go ahead and turn off at 225,000. Ah, uh, overshot a little bit. So we can see that we've recorded 226,653 points of data, which is certainly a handful. So I've got the CSV there on the corner of the screen, and we're going to watch it update in real time here once I press export. We're going to see about how long it'll take. There we go, we are running. There we go, we've started exporting the data. It exports all of the values for the X, and then it moves to all the values for the Y, and all the values for the altitude. See, this is the downside with recording all your data and then exporting, is it just takes a really long time, you know? 100, 101, and it's all exported with 102%. Look at that, we exported some extra data. No, I'm just kidding with you. Now we can take a closer look at the data itself. It's color-coded for us so that we can actually see what's happening here. We can see this is column 7, this is tilt R here, tilt on the roll axis. This is what our booleans look like. They're just zero to uh, zero and one values. There is an option to change it to true and false, but generally programs like Excel and Curve appreciate it more if you do ones and zeros. But if we go back into Excel here, I can import the same data again. And we'll go ahead and load it in. It'll open up in a new workbook. And here we have all the data again. So we could take a look at the altitude, for example, in a line graph, but I guarantee it's not entirely super interesting because it goes up and then it comes back down. Now the most interesting piece of data here that isn't RPS because I forgot to record the RPS of the engine is probably the fuel here because we can see that the booster vents a lot of fuel out after stage separation to have an ideal sort of like weight for landing. We can also take a look at what the boolean values look like. Unsurprisingly, it is zero to one. So we can see when stage separation happened. <laughs> And here's an example of what the data looks like in Curve. This was a previous test flight, so the RPS should actually be in here somewhere. But there's a lot of data coming from the rocket. Or we can see that the, the X and the Y stayed relatively consistent once it got to its landing spot. And that was pretty cool, because the landing spot is slightly off the launch pad. And we can see it did indeed correct it for that. I think I've demoed it pretty well, so I'll show you how to set it up and all the settings that are available for it. In the workbench here, I'll go ahead and show you how to set up the microcontroller and all the settings available for it. So we need just a little bit of a platform here. I'm gonna have infinite electric turned on, so I'm not gonna spawn a battery. So first, we'll place the microcontroller, obviously, front and center. And we need some data to be able to write down. So I'll put in a couple of throttle levers here. So we'll, if the throttle lever is greater than 10, then, hold on, we need to, <laughs> need to write the data. 
Because I don't really care about tick delay right now, I just have a couple of things here being written. We're gonna need some buttons for the control flow. We'll have the log, the export, and the clear button, and an optional indicator so we know when it's done. And of course, hook up the optional screen. Really, most of this is optional. The only thing that's required is the data in and the log and export buttons. So into the settings on the microcontroller, there's a handful of them. This is what it comes, this is what it looks like out of the box. So we have a couple of sliders here to adjust what channel, how many channels does it record here? So I could turn it up to 18 here, but it's actually not going to do anything because if you haven't named the channel, it's not going to record it. So you need to name the channel to have the microcontroller read the data and record it. And don't, don't name two channels the same thing, otherwise you're gonna get some real funky looking data. So I'll just reduce this back down to two and the booleans here to one. And I'll name these, I'll call this lever one and lever two. We're not recording bool two, but this is our greater than 10. There's also the option to change when it samples. Uh, truth be told, this doesn't do all that much, so whatever, it's frankly untested as well, so use at your own risk. I can change it to convert bools to ones and zero, and I can tell it to clear the CSV on spawn or not using the Python server. The actual microcontroller itself is not complicated at all, aside from the ridiculous amount of property texts. The microcontroller is just these handful of nodes for the most part, and the Lua script is minimized. All the source code for this project, including the Python server and the Lua script and the C++ server, is all available on a GitHub linked in the description. So check it out there. And of course, join the Sentitech Discord server, links also in the description, to get updates on this project so you'll know when things are updated, when there's a bug fix, or you can follow the GitHub repository if you're into that kind of thing. So now that I've set it up here with the correctly named channels and everything here is correct, frankly, I can keep this as high as I want and it's not going to change anything because I didn't name any of the other channels. But I like to keep it nice and clean anyway and save on precious processing power. Alright, after one failed demo because I accidentally set the... <laughs> accidentally told it to record one number channel so lever 2 wasn't being recorded, but point aside, we're ready now. The CSV is empty. I have the Python server running in the VS Code terminal, and we're ready. So I'm just going to press log here, and we can see that it started logging, and it's updating every second along with the ETA. So I can really, you know, log some data here with these two levers. It's much more interesting if you have a dynamic system like the rocket. Point aside, I can go ahead and stop logging. Again, I've got the Python server on the other screen, and we'll be able to see that it will indeed spam my console when I press export here. I don't think I actually there's enough time, but yeah, I didn't get across in time. But it recorded some values here. And of course, I can press the clear button here. The CSV is empty now. Isn't that crazy? But that's pretty much the entire thing. Again, code's on GitHub. Join the Sentitech Discord for updates uh, or to post suggestions or whatever. Also accepting pull requests and bug reports on the GitHub. And I think that's all for me. I might showcase another uh, couple tools that I have, but that's all for me. Uh, comment, like, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.